Take me to Acts chapter 15. Now, last week's time I began to teach on conflict resolution. And I move on further into on Wednesday when I went deeper. And on Wednesday I spoke from Acts 15. Let's look at from verse 32. Going. And so I'm continuing from there. If I don't finish, I'll probably continue on Wednesday. And last week I told you that the first conflict was in the Garden of Eden when Adam said he's a woman. And the woman said he's a snake. And God said, I know the next thing it will be, it will be, it is I. And so God drove them out of the garden because I've realized that I mean Acts 15, verse I said verse what? Okay, because of time, give me verse 37. Was at 32, I did that in um, on Wednesday. So give me 37 and 2, 39. And I, on Wednesday, I told you that two main reasons for conflict is let me, let me, is let's read. And Barnabas determined, and the first note of conflict is determined. Determined. Barnabas determined to take with them. John, whose surname was Mark, 38. Let's look at Barnabas. But Paul thought not good to take with him them from... Um, okay, give me New King James, please. Okay, give me NLT. Okay, no. Okay, it's okay. New King James, it's okay. Paul, give me 37 again. Good. Madame Bass was determined to take with him John called Mark 38. But Paul insisted. So you see, two men of God. One is determined. One is insisting not to take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with I can't read the rest. Can you take down the announcement? So, okay, let me read. And had not gone with them to work, to the work, verse 39. Then the contention, 39, or the conflict became so sharp that they parted one another, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. Amen. Now, I want to move further from what I thought on Wednesday. I believe you must get a message to understand what I said on Wednesday. But if you read Acts 15, it's so interesting because in Acts 15, you will see that in Acts 13, you see that the Holy Spirit separated Paul and Barnabas. Acts 13, verse 2, 3, the Holy Ghost was the one who came and says, after strong fasting and prayer, the Holy Ghost says, separate me Paul and Barnabas for the assignment I've given them. And so you sometimes will wonder that if the Holy Spirit brings people together, does it mean they'll have problems? Because I've seen people who feel like if God was the one who said, I should marry this person, why am I having a problem? <laughs> because they feel like if the Holy Spirit is to the one who says, marry somebody, there shouldn't be a problem. Because if the Holy Spirit said it, or it is God who said it, then it is going to be very smooth. But interestingly, conflict doesn't come because of Holy Spirit. It comes because of people's personal perceptions, people's opinions, people's beliefs, their background, and what they think about. It has nothing to do with God. So if you look at the Holy Spirit coming and saying that separating Paul and Barnabas, you can easily look at it and think that, oh, if the Holy Ghost says separate me, then these people are going to have a life full of good, goodness. But by Acts chapter 14, they traveled, and when they went to Acts chapter 15, the first missionary journey, they were doing so well, winning crusades, doing crusades, winning souls. And something very funny happened when um, Paul went to... Acts 15 went to these unbelievers and got them born again. And when they got these unbelievers born again, can you just imagine there was an argument in the church and the argument is should they be circumcised? Okay, for want of a better, should they be castrated? Or they should not be castrated? Should they be circumcised or not? And Paul felt like this boat does not need to be circumcised. And they both felt like they should be circumcised. So they decided to go to Jerusalem and to go and meet Peter and go and meet James. And when they went to meet Peter and James, Peter and James argued and told them that, hey, it is not advisable for them to be circumcised because they are believers, they have given their life. God, Jesus said, we should go to the world and preach the gospel. So they're also born again. And 
when John Mark met Peter, John Mark decided not to follow um, Paul again. But later you read that, I'll, if you want the scriptures, I'll give it to you. I think chapter 3, verse 5 of, I think, First Peter. Don't take me there. Where Paul, Peter calls John Mark his son. He calls him his son. So it's like, I have been somebody I call my son or my daughter. And to the person feeling like, or oh, another pastor or somebody else should be his son or a daughter. And Paul was like, I don't like this person again because I'm the one who took you to, that, to meet this thing. And interesting, it is John Mark who wrote the apostle. Peter was in an uneducated, illiterate. So it was John Mark who wrote the book of First Peter, Second Peter, for Peter. And when he met Peter, he felt like not following um, how do you call it? Paul for a while, but being with Peter for a moment. So when later Paul decided to go for a second missionary journey, John Mark came and said, now I'm ready. Let us go. Peter said, hey, Paul said, no, 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 no. You can't go with me. Why? If you left me once, you can leave me again. A lot of the times, and this is where the Bible said, and Peter, uh, sorry, Paul insisted John Mark was determined. Now, if you read through history, John Mark was a cousin of Barnabas. <laughs> so, if you look at it technically, John Mark, um, um, Barnabas was comfortable with who? Oh, help me. I thought you were following the story. Is comfortable with who? Paul, um, Barnabas is comfortable with who? John Mark. Meanwhile, Paul was comfortable with John Mark in the beginning, but now because he betrayed him once, he felt like once betrayed, this guy can betray me forever. Now because of that, he decided not to travel with John Mark, um, John Mark again. And John, Madame Basu said that if you don't travel with my cousin again, then you go your way, I'll go my way. So Paul traveled with um, Silas for the second missionary journey, and then Barnabas traveled with Barnabas for their missionary journey. Now the truth is, was it God that put them together? Answer me, yes or no? What made them separated? One was determined and one was insisting and none of them was ready to break a truce. Everybody wanted their way. And sometimes what makes us have conflict in marriage, in home, in church, is everybody is too wise. I know you won't clap because you don't understand me. Or you true is not true. And we end up saying that. So let's take that somebody comes to me and say, Man of God, these three people, which one should I marry? Now I ask you questions and I say, Oh, marry this one, it will help you. When you go and you are fighting, you say that you told me to marry. Why are we fighting? <laughs> and you come and say, Oh, I knew this lady or this guy was like, If you knew, why did you say we should marry? Why did you even bless it? As if when you marry or you date people, you see, when you date, you marry, sorry, when you marry, when you associate, when you build relationship with people, you are marrying, let me use the word for the one of a depraved human being. A depraved human being, look for the word depraved. The first time I came across that word in Romans chapter 1, where the Bible says we are so depraved that people have some homosexuality. homosexuality. When the mind has gone so low, our brain has gone so low, so low, 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 lower, lowest, that people don't have conscience again. We are in a world that things people do in our days, we wouldn't even mention it. I think you are not hearing me. <laughs> oh, is it true? It's not true. As adults, if you are old in my age, when you hear things people do today and say that, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. You wonder because in our days, you would never even think of it to even do it. <laughs> but these days, it is normal. It has become normal because it's like the Bible says, in the last days, the love of many shall wash cold. So as you are becoming, as the last days keep coming, conscience is sinking lower and lower. The rate at which the dollar is going, dollar will never become one is to one again. It is going and going. So it's, that is how life is becoming. We are becoming more sinful. It's like the more we live longer, the more our sin becomes normal. To the extent that if you are, you are the one that is being truthful, you are the one that is seen to be abnormal. Years ago, there was a president of a, a, a country 
who I had to cancel. I won't mention the name. And the president was trying to save his nation from economic hardship. And we had to talk. And we were like, the way he wanted to buy fuel for his country. And he had tried for six months to buy fuel. He was not getting fuel because all the fuel people you want to buy fuel from, they are all 419. I mean, the fuel people, the Sahara, all of them, you have to pay bribe before you can get fuel for your country. Now, the country was becoming so tough that when he asked me what you do, I said, Mr. President, I'm a pastor, but can I advise you? Pay the bribe and get the fuel. He said, ah, you too? <laughs> of course. At this stage, let me tell you, there are some countries, uh, let me give you only two, Ghana and Nigeria. If you want to stop corruption, you will go down as the most corrupt. If, if you want to stop corruption, in especially Nigeria, if you try to stop Nigerian corruption, you'll be seen as the most corrupt person in the world. Because from head to toe, everybody is so corrupt that not being corrupt is corruption. <laughs> you see, we are in a day that it's like, it's like when you are a virgin, it's a miracle. Oh, oh boy. For it to be proven, I must sleep with you first. Because saying is not true. I think I'm not preaching well. Or is it true? It's not true. <laughs> but in years before, it was normal. So, in moving on, in, by the time you get to Acts chapter 16, let me show you the hypocrisy of our world. But Acts chapter 16, can we go there? I want emphasis. But Acts chapter 16, just one chapter after, Paul, who went to tell some people that they should not get circumcised, won a soul, had a spiritual son called Timothy, and he asked Timothy to be circumcised. Now you ask that, ah, Paul, were you not the same person that traveled to Jerusalem that brought conflict, and he told the whole nation that circumcision is not needed? But now when he came to your son Timothy, you are telling your son Timothy that he should get circumcised. Now, isn't it conflict? Doesn't Paul look conflicting? Because you told a whole nation not to get circumcised, but you are telling one person to be circumcised. Let's read it. And he came to Teba and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, who believed but his father was Greek. Go. Two. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Let's read on first one. But Paul wanted to have him to be with him. Paul needed this person to be his personal aid. So he took him and circumcised him. Paul himself took the boy, the guy, and cut. He circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. So now, everybody look at me. Is Paul a hypocrite? Let's be frank here. Is he a hypocrite? Yes, but to me, at my level, I understand he's not, because let me tell you this. In, in success, everybody and the price you pay. Timothy was going to work with Paul. Paul wanted to avoid all kinds of controversy. So Timothy asked for unique circumcision. I don't care about other people who are far away. If they live their life anyhow, it is cool. But you don't want to be close to me. You can't live your life anyhow. You can't dress anyhow. You can't behave anyhow. There's a certain way I expect you to behave because of the place you are in because every on every level of growth and the price you have to pay or you are not getting me here this is another problem with us in our generation we want things but we don't like the process you want to be esther but you don't want to bath with oil of meh and oil of frankincense you want to take your body scent that is a bad order and you still want to marry the king so at the end of the day you can't get it because the level you have to go to in the price I have, I have seen this in church where somebody will come to me and say that and eh, you have allowed this person to behave this way but you are not allowing me to behave this way and when you try to tell them that the two of you are not the same they think that you are rather being uh, help me with the english word my brother help me you are being partial but I'm not being partial. You see, the price of a thing is determined by the value of the thing. Please, all of you watch here. You see this grass? This one is 2,200. This one, hey, 
This one is 2,200. This one is 2,000. They look alike. But when we lifted it, and you, we saw the under, then you know that the one that is 2,200 will last longer than the one who is 2,000. Life can look alike. Marriages can look alike. Ministry can be alike. But let me tell you, if you want to be an FD Yali, you don't just get up and be an FD Yali. If you want to be a Jesus, you don't get up and be an a Jesus. It is the price you pay that determines who you become. But you know what we do? We choose who to become and we don't like what to pay. And sometimes we rather see people as being by us. So you can go to a home that one person sweep, clean. And the person is angry. But you don't tell this person to sweep and clean. Me, I know the vision I've had towards you. And the vision I've had towards you, if you don't sweep and clean, the man that is coming to marry you want a person that wants to sweep and clean. I could have had a vision in the vision you and your husband in the future divorced because you were too lazy in the house. So me, I'm preventing that vision I had about you that will take place in 20 years to come. And I'm telling you, sweep and clean. And that person, I'm not telling the person to sweep and clean because the person naturally sweeps and cleans. So if the person is not sweeping, the probability is that he's tired or he's being naturally lazy. By your own, it is in your DNA. You are not, you are not, am I preaching well here? It, it is in your DNA and where you want to, and when it asks people, you see, you see, life is like a when you go to the mall window shopping. I don't know if you have gone for window shopping before, huh? anything you like can pick. You see, TV one day I took some people to shopping, Rukaya and Fatia. You've taken you to before. Okay. Now, when I want people to think, that's what I do. When I took them, I said, you can pick anything. Wait, how much is this TV? They saw one TV, 65,000. And I said, Daddy, TV. 65,000. I said, do you want it? I said, no. You see, when, when you see some in the, somebody's room, eh, you can easily want one. Until you go and ask the price. The day you ask the price, your desire change. So sometimes when I want people to think straight, I take them to the field. There are certain things people will never understand when you chat until they're on their field. When I take you to shopping, you can pick anything. When you finish, I remove my 20 CDs in my pocket. Now I tell this what I have. We give you the person at the counter. And when you give it to the person at the counter, you see that you yourself start removing. No. No, some of you, you are at the rejected list. You are at the counter of life and destiny. And you are rejecting a lot of things you chose for yourself. With me, I will marry this kind of person. I will marry this person. I will marry this kind of person. As you are growing, you yourself, you are rejecting it. Nobody will tell you to change. You yourself, you realize that you don't fit. No. 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 Then you start looking at your wallet. Show some coins. No. Then you ask, is there any discount? They say, no discount. The most funny thing is that you leave the rest on the decks and then you pick the chips. And you know something? When you are going, the way the back of your head feels, eh, you, you can't look back. I don't know if you have been there before. Especially if we're a lady and you go out with your boyfriend and you pick everything. By the time you turn, the boy is missing. Can I tell you a story? This happened life. And I was there with this lady. The lady is in church now. A lady was dating somebody and they called their friends. They called and the lady was sitting at a big hotel. And the guy said, order anything you want, I'm coming. And this lady ordered. He kept ordering. Ate everything. Now, you are laughing. <laughs> now, the lady calls the guy, the guy would not pick. Calls and the, now the phone was off. So I was with this, my daughter, and the lady calls his friend and said, please, can you send me money? I said, why? <laughs> I'm calling the lady, said, give me the number I'm going to call. They call the number, nobody will pick. That is when you realize that you are eating foolishly.
You know, the next thing you can do there is to be the maid there for one hour. <laughs> you move your wig, all your nails, and you go to the kitchen. And you pay another price for not having cash. You pay a price of you clean bills or go to jail. And that is the, you see, it looks like it's restaurant matter, but that's the reality of life. Some of you, you, you dream somebody will help you and you didn't live a life. Now the help didn't come and now you are going to try to clean bowls. And you are not a bowl cleaner type. So you realize that there are two levels of conflict. Inner conflict and external conflict. And I'll tell you that a lot of external conflict is a result of inner conflict that nobody knows. Paul was what? Insisting. Why was he insisting? A lot of people insist on things because of where they are coming from, where they are going. What was Paul's problem? He was bitter. The last day that Paul was writing, the last letter Paul wrote to Timothy, the end of the letter, he was about to be executed, he was about to die. He wrote and he said, when you are coming, I taught you those who came on Wednesday, bring me John Mark. He's profitable for the ministry. Sometimes you see the profitability of people when you don't need them again. Because your inner conflicts will never have allowed you to associate with them because of your pride. And two major causes of inner conflict is pride and selfishness. People who are selfish and are proud, let me tell you, you, they will always have conflict. Because listen, conflict doesn't come because of anything. Conflict is because of who we are. Look at something, who are you? What does the person say? I'm being myself. I know the funny thing I've heard our people. People say this like, you didn't hear the man of God say that when we're praying that, Lord, because I'm a destiny person, I will, I will not listen to counsel. Anybody who advises me, it, I'll be determining it. And it's true, you should determine the counsel. But let me give you a good advice. Where you are today is a result of the counsel you took or the counsel you did not take. Hear me. Can I teach? Should I teach? Now hear me carefully. The most, the most difficult time in a person's life is when you can't listen to anybody by yourself. You see, and God will always leave you to your own judgment. And true leadership doesn't push. True leadership teaches you and allows you to make your own decision so that you can allow yourself to become responsible. Now, when you realize that you are a human being that always looks for, look for somebody to blame, to determine whether you are successful or not successful, I can promise you, you will never get anywhere in life. Let me prove it to you. Here is Adam and Eve. When they were eating the tree, did God see them eating it? Yes. Did God come and stop them? No. Why? It is their choice. But that choice led them to the whole world, their whole family, their whole generation, and us being in captivity for 6,000 years and over till Jesus comes. So your decision can put your whole family in coma. The children of Israel are, in, are just like from here to Makati Hill. If you look at the map where Moses stood, it was like being at Makati Hill and looking at Anya. That was how close the promised land was. And yet it took them 40 years. Why? Because some people said, we can't. Did God want them to go? Yes. Did God want them to win? Yes. But God will never fight your choice. It is your choice. Because if you fight, anytime people push you against your will, they are being manipulative. The best people can do to you is to educate you on your will so that you make your own choice. Sometimes you have people say, you should not push me, you should not force me. Wait a minute. True love does not push. True love allows you to make a decision. Years ago, my wife is safe, I'm lying, she would tell you. Years ago, somebody was interested in my wife. Very, very close to me. And she came to me that I should help him. Can you imagine? I mean, the lady I want, you also want. I helped him a bit, but I didn't help him with all because it would have hurt me more. 
So I gave him, okay, when I want to see her, this is how I do, this is what I do. Because my, she was the type that she has a grandmother called torture. And you know a grandmother who is a head mistress all her life and is called torture. She knows that to see her, you have to go to torture. So there was keys to get her to come from her room. And she was on the top of a story building. So I know what I do so that she would come down. So I taught this guy what to do. And this guy came and I stood far off. And I was watching as this guy was calling her. Master, my heart. The next moment, I picked a car and ran to Kumasi to go and hide small. Because I couldn't observe what was going on. After a week or less than a week, the guy called me and said, a man of God, they used to call Mr. President. Mr. President, she didn't agree with me. The Lord said, you know, the guy came to say, the Lord said, she's the one. Now the Lord said, it is somebody else. As soon as I heard the Lord say, it's somebody else, I shortened my, fly, my, my trip and came down. And I had to cement everything before it's too late. But you know, you know what, what made me feel? That was when I knew that she was really mine. Because you see, sometimes, sometimes when you see somebody you are dating, the person is trying to go somewhere, the person is trying to move somewhere, you, you are doing everything to seduce, to manipulate, to do everything to get a person. You will get the person, I promise you, but you will never really get a person. The heart must decide. The person has said he loves you, right? But let the person leave it. I'm not preaching well. You are seducing this person. Giddy, giddy. So he was interested in me. She was interested in me. Yes, it is true. But the person looks like he's moving. He's moving. You are doing everything for the movement to cease. Keep it up. So give the guy pregnancy. He will marry you by, because of pregnancy. After the pregnancy and the marriage, you see bubble bubble. Write this thing down. It was one of my personal keys when I became born again. Choices determine destiny. Where you are today is because of the choice you make yesterday. The choice you make today will determine the, where you will get to tomorrow. I think I'm not preaching well so far. You won't clap. Okay. <laughs> when I see people who are insisting and people who are determined the best I do is I pray for you and I give you counsel you are, you are advising the person you are talking to the person, the person. These are people, as soon as you talk to them eh, but, and, and they try to you see, you see, and they are trying to prove to you that your, your situation is wrong. You know what the person is trying to tell you? Everything you are saying is not sinking in. And such a person should be allowed to live on. Because in life, I told you something on Wednesday that a wise man told me something. They can decide to use the stairway or to use the lift in life. You can, use, you can decide to climb the stairs to go to the hundredth floor. Or decide to use their lift. Counsel, godly counsel, are always a lifter to your next level. But <laughs> trouble, pain, is also a way to the top. But by the time you get there, it's 40 years or 6,000 years. Maybe you'll be expired by then. Some women don't know that they will expire very soon. Let me put a comma there. And continue on the preaching. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 18. NLT. Some people make cutting remarks. They do what? Cutting remarks. Look at them and say, what is cutting remarks? Give me NLT. Cutting remarks are words you speak just to cut people off. Do you know why the Bible said honor your father and your mother? The reason why it said honor, because honor is different from obedience. Obedience simply means do what they are telling you, come what may. But honor simply means that listen to what they are saying without talking. 
just listen. Go and meditate and ponder over it and find out if, if it will help you. But you know what people also do? When you are telling them what to do, they are also telling what they think must be done. And most often, when people talk like that, it means that a lot of the times, whatever you are telling you, it is 50-50. They are yet to grab. And most often, I've seen people like that, after a while, when you actually ask them, what did I say? They tell you what they said, not what you said. Because they heard what they wanted to hear and not what you told them to hear. I was telling somebody today that I prefer writing to people than talking. Because a lot of the time, when you are talking, people can misinterpret it. But when you write, you tell me where to put the full stop and where to put the comma. Because I can say, how are you? With a comma. And I say, how are you? With a full stop. They are not the same. One is a rhetorical question. And one is a question. Rhetorical questions must not be answered. Look at somebody. Are you determined or you are insisting? I didn't hear you. What did the person say? First, okay, let's look at what some of the times conflict, when there's a conflict between you, one of the things you see is that there's no amount of joy in your spirit. Your joy is always limited. You know how I know that people are not committed to a cause when they do things 50%, 20%, and not 100%. You know, joy is an energy that brings completion. Joy. Do you know that anything you are doing with joy, you don't give up on it. Is it true or is it not true? Oh, is it true or is it not true? When there is joy, people do things that they don't even want to do. Because joy is a strength. Nehemiah 8 10. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So I determine people's strength, or I, I, you must determine people's strength by the level of joy they exhibit at what they do. Can you get me something? Okay. The person will get it done. But looking at the person's body language, the person will not get any benefit. Because anything you don't do with joy, it means that the benefit will never arrive, or if it will arrive, it will arrive lately. You are not clapping, right? Oh, amen. Why did the Bible say, count it all joy? When you fall into diverse kinds of temptation. Because you know something? Because a person who knows God very well, that when trouble comes, he sees that an opportunity. He doesn't see trouble as trouble. So the trouble is a laughter. This is going to make me become rich. So the person is laughing. And you, you see the trouble, you are moody, you are in pain, you are troubled, and so you keep that trouble to trouble you. Oh, look at someone and say, are you happy or you are sad? So, James chapter 3, verse 18, NLT says, Those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. How did Genesis chapter... Let me very sure. How did Abraham... You let me do it. Look at somebody and say, you need love. I didn't hear you. Give me James 1.15. Say, you need love. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. You need what? Do you know that, I'll, I'll, I'll move on to James 1.15. Do you know that, look at them say, for you to overcome conflict, you need joy. Say joy. Say love. Do you know that love covers sin? Do you know that? When people are in love, eh, when you ask them, hey, oh, you didn't do that, they will defend them to let the letter. But when they are no longer friends, that's when you see that the very thing the person defended. So when I see people who start telling me bad things about their friend, nothing tells me, but I know that this person is in conflict with the person. 
I don't, you don't need to tell me there's conflict. Why is all of a sudden you, can, you are bold enough to tell me negative things about this person? It's a sign to me that there is conflict. When there's no conflict, the thing can be true, visible, seen. The person will defend it, everything. Have you seen a woman and a man in love? When the people tell them, you people, when you marry two weeks, say, man of God, please, we have prayed. We have fasted. We love each other. Ask everybody. People, if you know, don't you see the way we move? Everybody feels it. When the love finishes, they can hear things like, she's lazy. The food is not even nice. This is the food you have been eating. And when your friends came and said the food was not nice, you said, that's how I like my food. Am I teaching something here? I said James 1.15. So one of the things everybody must do is that when you see that people are coming to you or you are sensing conflict within yourself, I've taught you something you can see that there's conflict within yourself. One of the things you first do is that you ask God for wisdom. And I was happy with the scripture that was used by Pastor Daniel this morning for prayer for conflict. Because you see, if anybody who gets into conflict and doesn't solve the conflict is lacking wisdom let me tell you every wise person is humble and I can prove it to you about characteristics of wise people because a wise person always listens than talks because when you listen you get to understand where the person is coming from and when you see where a person is coming from sometimes you even pity them you meet a woman if you meet a woman that doesn't like sex, if you listen to the real story about how she was raped when she was young or abused when she was young, you, the way you treat that person will change. All of a sudden, it will change your mindset straight away about that person. If you meet somebody who was verbally abused growing up, the parents were always insulting this person. And whenever you say one word, they be easily become offended. You will not understand why words really offend such people. Why? Because you understand where they are coming from. So the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He gives it to anybody. Whether you are born again, you are not born again. If you ask God for wisdom, he will give it to you. May God give us wisdom. Amen. Look at somebody say, have you asked for wisdom before? Only time people ask for wisdom is when they want to do business. Instead of you going to God, that God, give me wisdom to handle my wife. Give me wisdom to handle my husband. Give me wisdom to handle my child. Give me wisdom to solve this problem. You, sometimes you see that the person is talking, you are getting angry. You keep quiet, the person finishes talking, say, oh, I think you are right, we'll talk later. You go into the room, you go into prayer, say, God, how do I solve this problem? Give me the wisdom to solve this problem. After two, three, you call the person, can we talk about what we said last week? And I say, now you are talking, and the person understands you, because you didn't go and talk your foolishness, how you were raised up, how you were brought up. You didn't react based on your emotion. You asked God for wisdom. One of the things I ask myself every time I'm in conflict is this question, how would Jesus solve this problem? if he was in my shoes. Ask yourself, any kind of conflict you are in, how would Jesus solve this problem if Jesus was in your shoes? And of course, he's in the shoes because Christ is in you. And if it's Christ is inside you, then he's in your shoes. The Holy Ghost in you doesn't come in you for you to speak in tongues and God should always answer you, giving you a miracle, getting pregnant, having babies and having breakthrough. That's not the only thing why the Holy Ghost is in you. The one of the reasons for him being in you is to grant you wisdom. 
Sometimes when conflict comes, you must hold hands together, whether it is home or office, and say, let us pray over this issue. We are arguing too much. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, grant us the wisdom so that we will understand ourselves in this situation. In Jesus' mighty name, then tell each other, let us go tomorrow morning, three days time, let us meet over this issue. The next time you meet, realize that everybody is talking wisdom. Before that, everybody was talking selfishness and pride, arrogance and bitterness. When Paul said, he's a man of God, when Paul said, Timothy, when Paul said, sorry, John Mark, I don't need John Mark. What was John who, who referring to? It was pain. It was a personal decision. Did God want them to be together? Yes! What separated them? A personal ego. Personal decision. Is it bridge ministry? Should I end? Maybe I'm talking too much. Oh, amen. I can now. So now, the first thing you must do when you want to solve conflict and you meet somebody, what did this guy do in the Bible? I don't think I can finish my notes. Genesis chapter thirteen, verse eight. Take me there. Abraham, the father of faith, sat and realized that he didn't have issues with Lot. The problem was how Lord's people treated his people. Let me tell you something here. <sighs> okay, let's read. <laughs> so Abraham said to Lord, everybody listening to me, I always tell you that the first person to negotiate conflict is the one that is of God. And read the Bible. I told you that God was the first person to come to Adam. Now look at this one also. Read. Finally, when the word finally comes, it will it will tell you that <laughs> it wasn't working. Abraham said to Lord, "That's confronting conflict. Let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our husband. After all, we are close relatives." Verse 9. So Abraham was like, the whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want and will be separate. If you want the land to the left, then I'll take the land to the right. If you prefer, do whatever you want. Because let me tell you this. A man who negotiates conflict, maybe you will lose in the sight of a human being. But you are the one that becomes God's obvious choice. You see, the problem with all of us is that we always want to win with man. But in life, it is not the man you win with that gives promotion. It's the God you win with. And I prefer to win with God than to win with man. Sometimes society can be clapping for your husband and you the wife. You know that you are the reason why the man is where he is. There's no reason for you to stand in public without me. This man has not been whatever. I tell you that you with God is a majority. It doesn't matter if everybody is against you. It's just a matter of time. And with time, Abraham was proving right. Abraham confronted Lord and said, Lord, my relationship with you is more needed than the conflict. I don't want to have a problem with you. You know why? If Abraham had a problem with Lot, Abraham would not have been the father of faith. And all that God told him would have delayed. And Abraham was telling Lord that, Lord, you can't stop it. It's better you take and do what you want to do than stop what God wants to do with my life. And it will prove to you, when Abraham even heard that Lot has been captured, he went to defend him, true or false. To prove to you that Abraham had nothing, when he even heard that the angels were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham still prayed and interceded. Why was it? Because Abraham didn't want to have any personal issue with anybody who was related to him because that, that alone is enough. You can have a lot of faith. You can be a man of God, a woman of God. You can be doing everything for God. But one little conflict can be a reason why you are not going where you are going. A man should have peace with himself. And one, look, it's better there is peace in your home, peace in the house, peace in the business than there is money in the business. Because where there is no peace, there cannot be money. (laughs) 
Women, listen to me. If your husband is poor, give the man peace. Lamentations 3, 17. Because I lack peace, I've forgotten prosperity. A man or a woman who has no peace can never think of prosperity. <laughs> Everybody read. Peace has been stripped away and I've forgotten what prosperity is. A man, a woman with no peace, a home, a church, a society with no peace can never prosper. Psalm 112, peace be within your walls and prosperity will be in your palaces. Shout, I need peace. I didn't hear you. Shout, I need peace. Okay, look at somebody next to you and say, I want peace. And I've taught you on this, it's in one of my books. In the tree language, we say tree. In, uh, peace is asum ajo. You know, sometimes you know what is asum ajo? When people keep, you have done this, you have done this. Is this? When everybody keeps accusing you, you've done it. You know, you don't have peace. Is it true? You just want to have your peace. Wasumu ajo. Ajo. The guy will say twe mu jo le. And where we say what? <laughs> Nigeria people, you say what? Iroba, Adan, you say what? Sometimes, you know what I do? When you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you know what I tell people? All that they are saying is right. Believe it. And I leave. Why? It's just a matter of time. Because I want to stop hearing it. Look at someone say, do you need peace? What the person say? Are you sure? Look at someone say, what kind of peace do you need? What the person say? Okay, read James chapter 4, 1 to 2 in the message Bible for me. Look at something, be at peace with yourself. Amen. James chapter 4. Message Bible. Let's read. Why do wars? Oh, why do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels come from? Hold on, don't don't rush. Quarrels. This one has done this in big crane. Where does it come from? And the Bible says, Do you think they just happen? No. Think again. They come about because you want your way. This is how I was brought up. This is how I have to do it. This is how it is done. And fight for it deep inside yourself. Let me read again. They come about because you want your way and fight for it deep inside yourself. So, even though you are listening, even though you are around, deep inside you, I'm not listening to you. Verse 2. You last for what you don't have and are willing to kill to get it. You want what it isn't yours, and will risk violence to get your hands on it. You wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? What is simply saying is that what about you going to God and asking God that God, can I have this? Because somebody is beautiful than you, you won't accept it. Natarene nyefe. Kai if this is wedding, I'll have a better wedding. Oh boy. Is that what they call wedding? There is something in you. Look at somebody and say, are you at peace with yourself? Now, I'll end on this and I'll continue on. Next week, I'll be talking about banal. Some say banal. Banal simply means people who lack originality. You know, 
I'm just giving you an essence of next week before I end my message. I was talking to you about banal. <laughs> Amen. You are not here. Attitude, altitude, and platitude. Some of you can go and check it. Do you know that? How do you call one, two, three, zero, one, two, three to nine in English? They are called characters. Why do you call A, B, C to Z? They are called what? Characters. You know why? They don't change. One in Ghana is one in Europe. A macular woman who has never stepped in school can be a bet, better businessman than a business administrator who has master's degree. You can look at it. You can, you can be taking his water and it's working here by his brain. He can tell you, say, you've taken 12, leave the 13 to one there. You thought he's looking here. His her brain, I don't need this macular woman. Master, don't joke with him. You give them and they can hold their money like this and say, it's left with 100 cities. They just shake their money. You would do. And you are counting. They don't have to count. <laughs> it is what we call character. They just see it, they know. And that's why I go deep into it. You are in love with somebody, eh? Take the person and go and give it to the woman that you wish you will marry. And let the person look at you and tell you that this woman is not what you think. It's called character. They can pose their face. Heap the breast. But a woman can tell you that this breast is not heaped. You a man, you will never know until you press. But a woman can look at another woman and tell this hip is artificial. Because a woman has a character that a man doesn't have. And a man too has a character. Look, look, if a woman tells you, guy, this lady is interested in you, man, believe it. Especially if it's your wife or your girlfriend. No, me no. Just no weapon fashion against me shall prosper. You don't know the God who has called me. That is for next week. <laughs> what a young man will stand on a able to see an old man will be sleeping and will tell you that this thing ay, 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 ay. <laughs> so I end on Romans chapter 12 banal platitude, attitude altitude banal is spelled B-A-N-A-L some of you have not heard this word before <laughs> Do you know Romans chapter 12 is a very common scripture. I beseech you, brethren, by the message of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now look at verse 2. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the word. Now that is most conflict comes from the level of mindset. The level of the person's renewed mind. A painter can draw a person and the head is down and the beard is up. When he finishes, he turns it around before you know it's a human being. Because the drawing is in his imagination. Most often, Everybody and the level of brain he is operating from. So Paul is speaking to Romans saying, be, be, do not conform to the standards of this world. I will get the message Bible very soon, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you prove that which is what? Say as good, say good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So listen to me. All of us are right now, all of us, our perception about life is based on three levels. The good, the acceptable and the perfect will. Now, let's assume 
that you, you are talking from the acceptable world, and me, I'm talking from the good will, we will not agree. We will never agree. And then God is operating from the perfect will. So the three of us, when we go to God, when, when the two of us go to God, all of us could be wrong. Me, I will be wrong. You two will be wrong because God is the only one who goes by what? The perfect will. Please, are you understanding me here? Oh, please, are, are, you, are you here with me? You are not with me. So, I want what is good. Somebody is looking at what is acceptable. Somebody is also looking at what is perfect. And all of us have to make the same decision. We will not all say the same thing. Because we are operating from different angles of doing things. Can I ask you a question? Is it wrong for a believer to dance to a worldly music? The answer I know is based on your level of understanding. To you, it is good. But don't do it in public. It's not acceptable. But to me, any music you listen to will determine the spirit that comes to your house. So, uh, you can hide the music from F.D. Gally and play it in your car and a witch will be sitting with you in the car. David played music and demons left Saul through of course. So, if there's a music that drives out demons, there's a dem there are music that brings in demons. You say music don't bring in demons. Let me show you this. Go and Google this thing or go to YouTube. If you want to attract snakes to your house, there's some kind of music if you play. Wherever your, the snakes are, they will appear in your house. And when they come, they will not attack you. They will come and start dancing. And when they finish, they will not leave. They will hide in the house for the next level of music. One day a prophet are you with me? Wanted to prophesy. His name is called Elisha. As soon as he entered the church, he saw his enemy. He saw somebody who doesn't listen to him. Called Ahab. And sometimes that's what happens. When a man of God meets people who disobey, the anointing can vanish. It can move you from perfect. That's when you are seeing this. It looks like, it looks like, it looks like, it looks like, it looks like. You can't even say what it is. But the person's attitude to, to, towards you is not correct. One day, one day, you, yeah, it's Sam. He was saying that I was sleeping in my car. And you, I was sleeping and driving. You came to tap me. Mr. Adotel, I said that before. There are a lot of people have said it before. And I woke up. There was an accident in front of me. I stepped on my brake two times. The third one, there was an accident. I had an accident. You didn't come. Why? I told him, there's, there's a gap. I, remember? I told him there was a gap. So he settled the gap. And he settled it. And since then, he doesn't have accident. I told him, at your intones, you are talking from good level. I, I won't argue with you. I have a son who looked at me and told me that. I said, he said, I should officiate a funeral on social media for them. They'll give me $1,000. I said, I can't do it. Because me, I don't know how to do funeral. And because nobody in our church will die for me to do funeral. So it's because, listen to me. He said, it's because the only young people in the church. The church, nobody's past 40 years. And I laugh. We have 60, 70 year old people in the church. And we're faint here. You see? You see, he's talking from his level of knowledge. Now, so this prophet, he was so excited. He was coming to prophesy. As soon as he met Ahab, Elisha, he, he got angry. He had to solve the conflict. He said, you! He confronted the guy with whatever. And when he finished, he still wanted to prophesy. The first thing he said is, bring me musicians. Let them play. And as they played, the Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied. Wait a minute. What happened? He was in bitterness. He was in unforgiving. And as long as he was in that attitude, the Holy Ghost was not going to work on him. Everything he says will not come to pass. So the only way that evil spirit will lift for the Holy Ghost to come was for him to listen to certain music. When they played the music, he said that, hey, you will not see ditches. You will not see rain. But by morning, 
all your animals will have water to drink. And it came to pass as the prophet has said. Why? Because music came to change atmosphere. Music is to determine your atmosphere. Look, your mentality is why you listen to worldly music. And when you get evil dreams, you come and ask me, what is the reason? You are quiet. Why are you quiet? One day, I have a daughter. And I was telling her that there is a spirit that is worrying her. She argued with me, it's not possible. I mean, those things they say, it doesn't happen to her. I said, that spirit will visit you. And you see, one day she rushed to my office. I saw the spirit. She saw the spirit, Gafili Gaduchi. You see, a lot of you, the only thing that you make you change is when you meet the spirit. She saw the spirit in her room. Life! Let me tell you the last thing. All truth is power. Do you know that you will never meet a Hindu man who will tell you, I'll kill you? You never meet any spiritual person who will fight on the street. Whether Hindu or Buddhist, they don't do that. If they will kill you, when you are insulting them, they just tell you, God bless you. And they leave. When they get to their room, they will finish you. You know why? Because they know that if they fight you physically, when they fight, it don't work. Let me tell you, anybody who does juju on Facebook or YouTube, it doesn't work. I'm not lying to you. Those prophets who come and say, let me, are, please take your seat. I'm teaching you something. Because let me tell you this. In spiritual, there's a lot of calculation. There's a good, acceptable, and perfect world. So someone will come and say that, I'm dying this against you. If you do it in public, if the person knows spiritual keys, he knows how to return it back to you. So when you do it in public, you want the person, if he's strong enough, to return it. But when you do it and the person doesn't know it, before you know you have it. So when will you go and return it? It's too late. So people who do things physically, they are not matured. Look, I had, I had this agent I work with. He came to me and said, he misbehaved. Eh? Me, I don't joke. I said, you will die, you and your children. I cast this guy. And I gave him the day to happen. This guy went to his church, he goes to Pentecost and did 21 days fast. On the last day of the fast, I was there in my office. He goes to Pentecost and the head of Pentecost, uh, Apostle Eric something, he appeared in my office. He said, Francis, if this boy dies, he has consulted me in the church. If he dies, I will not be okay. Forgive him. So I got up and I called my phone. I said, what are you doing in the church praying? He said, I am fasting and praying that what you said will not come to pass. I said, your father in the Lord has appeared to me. He said, I should forgive you. You are forgiven. Do your work right. Let me tell you this. If you think the spiritual world doesn't exist, then don't dream. If you dream, then the spiritual world is a world that exists. You can't play with it. You might be educated in the physical, but in the social world, you are not educated. Stop the true moon. Because I know professors of marriage who are not married. And I know doctors of hearts who have a heart problem. And I know kidney specialists who have kidney problems. Because let me tell you, it's not everything that is book. There's another world out there. So live in your world and talk about your world. You only operate by your level of understanding. And there's conflict because you don't understand what is happening in the spirit realm. You don't know the thing. We are telling you the thing. And you are arguing with us over the thing. And the painful thing painful thing. I'm saying this. I'm angry. Is this people they stay in church and they have the audacity to say that they've been in church for all these years. God has been ungrateful. 
You listen to worldly music. You sleep around. You smoke. You drink. When we say, we say it is nothing. Why still blame us? Let me tell you this. I'm wild though. Because you know why I'm crying? I'm crying within me. Sometimes my heart hurts. You know why? Because I see millionaires, billionaires, destiny changers, who out of their stupidity, what they can take 10 days to do, they want to do it in 40 years. Because they are too wise. You're operating because you are telling me that man of God, Paul told the people to circumcise. But why are you not to circumcise? Why are you telling me, Timothy, to circumcise? Timothy, you were a millionaire. That person outside the world is an ordinary person. Joseph, your brothers will not go to prison because they will not have to become prime ministers. You will go to prison because that is where you meet your deliverer and your breakthrough. Don't compare yourself to somebody's life. Because let me tell you, the, what you want is not what somebody wants. And so your price is not somebody's price. At least do what you have been told to do. And come and tell us that you did it and it didn't work. Then that one, we have a case. why it you want to be a pilot but you are saving money to go and learn how to drive a car are you crazy and you went to learn how to drive motor and the next time I ask you say you want to go and learn how to drive Okada the next one you want to go and learn how to drive you want to drive ordinary car now you say man of God the Lord has revealed to me that I'll have four by four me God showed me you have a, you you will pilot your own plane you so you want to buy four by four so you are going to learn how to drive four by four when will you wake up to your calling when will you wake up to your assignment because God only protects you because of your assignment and when you have your assignment, you can be going to valley of the shadow of death. You don't fear anything because it is he who asks you to go through it. <laughs> Others will do the same thing and fail. You will do it and be successful. Why? Because you are not the same. Your mechanism, your wiring is not the same like somebody's wiring. So don't compare yourself to somebody. Let's be on our feet. I know you won't clap. <laughs> You'll be the first lady of Ghana one day, right? Stop asking the guys to hold you. Stop kissing in public. Now my friends do it. You are not your friends. Those people, they'll be your house boy and house girl. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Ask God for one thing. Give me wisdom. Lord, my heart is yours. It all belongs to you. I give you all the glory and I love you. Lord, I want to tell you more. Oh, Lord, how much I really do love you. I love you. Lord.
After this message, you will change for two weeks and return back. And then after another message, two weeks. And the Lord tells me to tell you, ask for him. He's waiting for you. Until you pass the test, it will wait for you. And he says, if you don't qualify, he will hand it over to your children. If your children doesn't qualify, he can hand it over to your children. But he said that there are some of you, he can't wait because if the Moses doesn't respond, somebody must respond. Because other people are going to depend on you. And because other people are going to depend on you, he can't wait for you. Somebody needs to book an appointment one-on-one -on -one because of today's message. To have your thinking made straight. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Because what you asked me to do, I have done. What you revealed to me this dawn, I did speak instead of last week's message. Bless your word. Let it bear fruit. Let it sustain us. Let it grow. Let it take us to the next level. Don't let us just walk in our own selfish mindset or our own pride. We want to move from the goodwill to the acceptable world. And Lord, if possible, your perfect will. Lord, we don't want a delayed journey. We want to embrace you and fulfill this assignment you have given to us. Lord, somebody just said, um, Lord, it's true that the man of God has spoken, but if you can reveal some things to me in my dreams, then I'll believe you. Lord, reveal to people in dreams, in visions in prophecy, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty clap of free.